Hello, good people. This is Monique and welcome back or welcome to my channel. Uh, I am on a financial health journey to create an inheritance for the generations to come. And I want to do that through consistency and discipline. And today we are here to do like actually a lot of stuff. So I'm here to do a biweekly budget check-in. I want to close out the paycheck that I received on December the 29th. And then I want to talk through some of the goals that I have set um, for January, for the month of January as like a mid month kind of, not reset, but check in for that as well. So we're going to cover all of those things. So for everyone who's liked or commented any of my videos, thank you. And then for those that have chosen to subscribe to my channel, I truly started this as a place to hold myself, myself accountable. But I do understand, recognize, and appreciate the community as a whole. So if you're rocking with me on this journey, thank you, thank you, thank you. Alrighty, so here's my plug out for my Steelers. If you're a Steelers fan, woo woo. Um, and we have a game on this coming Sunday, which is our playoffs. So y'all stay up, stay, you know, send up a quick prayer if you want, <laughs> as far as making sure that we can go into Buffalo and do what we need to do. At any rate, Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to start with our goals, where I am as far as my goals are concerned. And I'll flip this around. Um, I am still using the Breezy Organization um, digital planner, the, the customizable one. I did purchase a landscape and a portrait version. Tried to do the landscape so that this view right here would make better sense. And it's just not for me. I, I want to feel like I'm like holding a notepad or a book. And so with that, the portrait you know, view kind of feels a little bit more comfortable. And so that's kind of what I'm going to be rocking with uh, for right now. So here are some of the goals that we um, had set or that I had set for the month of January. And again, I'm using mini goals or mini monthly goals to try and reach the overall larger goals that I have for 2024. So I want to get to 15 no spend days. Now we'll go in a little bit more. There you go. All right. So I want to do 15 no spend days. Um, and I'm at about 40% on that. Here is my calendar as far as my no spin is concerned and how I am tracking it. So I did get three last week and I am at three already for this week. Today's the 12th, um, Friday, the, uh, January the 12th. So I am about halfway at this point to reaching my goal, close to being halfway, um, reaching my goal. So that's why I put it at about a 40% on that. Um, with reading um, the Bible, um, I know this has nothing to do with finances, but just overall, I'm at about 30%. I think I'm somewhere up in here as far as the chapters and how many I wanted to necessarily cover. Working out three times a week, I'm about up at 20%. So last week I did meet my three days that I wanted to cover. This week I haven't gone at all. Um, the weather has a lot to do with that with it raining and stuff in my particular area. And then I haven't been feeling well either. So I don't know that I'll hit the 100% on that because three times, three times a week for roughly five weeks is 15. So I don't know if I can make it make up for this week. We, we will see. And then I can already mark off the one that I had around saving $50 from variable spending. And you'll see that in my bi-weekly bi budget check-in. So in one paycheck period time frame, I've been able to save that 50. Uh, so I am at a hundred percent and I'm going to keep, of course, trying to save. Uh, and then I'll look in February at seeing if I, I can up that goal. So even with the financial stresses, I guess you would say that I have right now, with my check pretty much being about 25% short of what it typically has been, um, I have still been able to save from that variable spending. So I'm going to count that as a win and I'm going to pat myself on the back for that one. Okay, so those are the goals and how we set those off. And then let's go to, yeah, there you go. So I'm going to go to my financial dashboard within the planner for January. Let's try that again, January. Let's go to the finances and let's go here. Alrighty, so my, as far as my actuals are concerned, they aligned with, okay, I'm not in edit mode, there you go. So they did align exactly as showing here. Let's go here. 
Let me make that a little darker so that you guys can see. So I got exactly what I said I was going to get. Um, I had the 500 for rollover and that was for my mortgage. And then my son did give me the $40. And so we'll move that over some. So that's 1175 500 500 and 40 yep 22 15 so we are right on board with that all right as far as my bills are concerned anything that's in green is good anything that's red is bad just meaning that maybe i did not factor it in or i did not hit a goal um, is pretty much how i calculate that so um, if you look down here for the ma majority of the bills that i had they came in as they should have bank fee so i did not get a bank fee charged on january the 6th for my variable expense accounts that i have in chase and i think the reason for that is I decided to set up an automatic draft from the variable expense regular account to my variable expense buffer account so that it's automatically taking $5 out of that account and putting it into what Chase considers to be a savings account, but have it going over there. And I think because I have an automatic savings amount moving from my checking to savings, it eliminates the cost for the bank fee. That's what I think. Um, and so I have not seen a, um, a bank fee charge for January. My hope is if I don't see one for February, then I know that's probably the reason why. And we'll make sure to leave that in play. So I have a zero there as far as that cost amount is concerned. Verizon came in a little bit cheaper than I anticipated. And that's why that's in green. And then here are some unexpected expenses. So I mentioned earlier that I already had a um, portrait style digital planner. I went ahead and bought the landscape to see if that was going to meet my needs. Tried it for about a week and it didn't, but I did. That was a cost that came out of my bills account that I did not plan for. Um, and this is, is actually irritating me a little bit, not because there's anything wrong with the planner, but because I actually had as a 2024 goal to wait 24 hours before I make a unplanned purchase. And I wrote it in black and white and I forgot. <laughs> and so if I would have thought through it a little bit longer instead of just pulling the trigger and going ahead and purchasing it as soon as the thought came in my mind, I probably could have saved myself $24 because I've never liked the landscape um, formatting. I've always been more of a portrait person, but I thought about it and said, hey, maybe that's what I need to do. Went ahead and purchased it and forgot about that goals. So that's part of the reason as well as that I'm going to start reviewing those goals and the mini goals that I have periodically throughout the month, as opposed to just setting them and then leaving them over on the side. And then you find out that you haven't met your goals. So that that's that. Lawn treatment, I had that set up apparently with Chon um, prior to the changes that I saw in my uh, finances and in my income. So he came out and took care of that. So I went ahead and paid him the $55 for the lawn treatment that happened on the third. And then I'm counting out six to seven weeks. That's typically how long it's, it, it is between treatments for the yard and making sure that I have that money saved up so that it's already accounted in my expenses. And I talked about that, um, uh, with the video that I did on the finance pal as a way for me to get a little bit better about having these items documented somewhere that I am constantly reviewing so that they, these things can stop catching me off guard. And then for Paramount Plus, so I signed up for Paramount Plus. It was a 30 day for free. And then after that, it's $5.99. Uh, and that was going to help make sure that I have, I can uh, access the Super Bowl when they play the game uh, because I am a football a football fan, um, but it reduced the amount that I have to pay for that service because I was using Fubo TV and that's $102, right? So this was definitely going to be cheaper. Well, they do have, um, not a special, but they do have a, a combo kind of thing where you can have Paramount Plus plus Showtime and it's just a little bit more um, and it, it's another $5.99, I guess, basically. So at the end of the day, I'm at around $12. So I did go ahead and decide to do that. What I did not realize is that it would cancel out the 30-day free subscription that I had in play. And I did not read the fine print. 
and I didn't pay attention to that. And so it's all good. I was able to take care of it. Um, and that $12 now covers Paramount Plus, plus Showtime. And I'm doing this in coordination with Mabu. Um, he's, I'm doing these, uh, Paramount Plus and Showtime. He's doing Stars and Netflix. He's got Amazon Prime. I've got HBO Max. He's got Disney. I've got um, Disney, Hulu, and ESPN, like that package. So we're we're making sure that we are looking at that and sharing the responsibilities as far as the subscriptions are concerned, but then pretty much have everything covered that we tend to watch. So there you go. Um, so those are some added um, unplanned expenses that I needed to make sure I documented here. So let's see where we are for the total, 44 10, 106, 82, 160, 30, 200, 24 should have been. So that's $1 extra. So I'm going to say plus on that. I am going to take a dollar away from the 55 and do 54 plus 12 equals 1,438. And then we will subtract that from 20, 22.15, and that leaves 777. That is better than 666. 777. All right. All right, next we will talk through um, the variable expenses. And you guys notice there's a whole lot of green there. I am excited about that. So I'm going to come over here to the Finance Pal. Let's open that in a new separate window. All right, so when we're looking here with my finance pal that I have now, um, we'll go to groceries first. All right, so I'll move this over a little bit. All right, so uh, week one, I did definitely go over as far as the groceries are concerned. Um, I had my, my daughter had her best friend over and instead of us going out anywhere and causing us to spend some additional funds um, and I felt like spend more money, I just had them look at up things on TikTok, different things that they wanted to cook or try. We bought all of those groceries and we pretty much stayed in the house for like four days straight cooking different things and just having fun. Uh, but once um, Corinne went back to school, um, I still needed to account for the items that I take care of for that. So I'm putting money on her account for lunch. And then she likes to take smoothies um, in the morning instead of having breakfast. And that's what um, caused me to definitely kind of go. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong week. So the first week is 1229 through 14. You might see that and it's in gray. So my apologies for that. So that's the first week. That's the week that uh, her best friend came over. We spent a lot of money in the grocery stores, way more than we typically do, than I typically typically do. You'll notice here that I was at $173 and I'd like to be closer to $130. And again, that's the reason why is that we did spend more money, but spending more money on the food and staying in the house was cheaper than going out, going to the movies, going out to eat or taking them to the mall or anything like that. So that was week one. Week two, which would have been this past week, is where um, <clears throat> we did. I did need to account for the things that I needed to buy for her for school. But even with that, I actually came in four dollars under budget. So forty three dollars over budget week one, four dollars under budget for week two. Um, I'm recording this video on Friday, so I've already started my cash stuffing or cash less stuffing for um, the week of January the twelfth. Um, I run my weeks from a Friday to a Thursday. So it'll be basically January 12th through January the 18th. So there you go for groceries. Sorry about that. I was off a week. Um, for gas, um, week one, I was within my budget. Um, I allot myself $40 a week. I only spent 20 on gas that first week, that um, the first week of January. Um, and the second week of January, because we didn't really go any place either, I've learned that the best way to save money is just to stay in the house. Um, so <laughs> we didn't go anywhere. I did not have to use any of the money that I had set aside for gas. And that is part of, that's 
primarily why I was able to reach my mini goal of saving $50 for my variable expense. So that's where the, the bulk of it or the majority of it came in. So I, was, I only used $20 week one and I didn't have to use any money for gas week two. All right, for spending um, week one, we did go to the movies and, and this was all on New Year's Day. We kind of did a, a date day or a date night, me and my boo. And so I helped with some of the expenses of that, uh, buying us something to eat and going to the theater. And he took care of the rest of it. We actually saw two movies in the same in the same day uh, and just had some fun. So week one, that's where my spending went. But I was still, I still was $8 under budget for the spending. And then for week two, last week, You'll notice here there were um, there was one visit to Starbucks, only one. I am proud of myself. Uh, and then one visit to McDonald's for my daughter. And even with that, I decided to eat leftovers. And so we were able to save some money there. And so this is, again, where I saw that savings um, that I'm using um, to achieve, achieve my goal of making sure I have some money saved up from the variable expenses. So I was $36 under budget for spending on that week, too. Um, and then for home, home is where I spend money pretty much at Walmart to buy any household items that I need. Um, you know, laundry detergent, dish detergent, plastic things, paper towels, toilet tissues, those types of things. And so in both cases, I'm pretty much on point. I spent my $30 week one, the full amount, and then I only had $2 left over. Still a good thing, the $2 left over for week two. Um, so with that, that's what you're seeing here as far as the expenses are concerned and um, the variable expenses are concerned. Again, anything in green is good. Anything in red is bad. I had a total of $500 available for me to spend for this two-week period. And let's see where we were at. Uh, 20, 173, 42. 30, 126, 14, and 28. And that total is $433. So out of the 500 I had available, I spent 433. And when you subtract that 433 from the 777, which was my overall total that I had, it shows that I'm, I am still under budget or I still have $344. Alrighty. Next, we come over here and um, I did contribute just a little bit to my sinking funds. Um, I didn't do, I did do some money to my savings challenges and my buffer, but that is left over from here, the variable expenses. And you will see that reflected in my savings challenge stuffing that I'm going to do as a part of my January the 12th. So it's, it's a little bit weird in that any monies that I'm able to save here from the 1229 check, I actually um, have those reflected in the numbers here. So, you know, this, the numbers that you see in gray here that I'm going to put $32 towards my general savings, I'll put another $28 towards my savings book. Those are in gray because it's not money that came from the check that I received on January the 12th. It's from the savings that I had from the check um, in December, December the 29th. So that's how I'm, I'm handling that. It can be a little bit confusing, but just think about it in terms of anything that I save for the two week period um, from variable expenses will be reflected in that next paycheck. Alrighty, so here for sinking funds, 10, 10, I forgot to write in what that amount was, 10, five, 10, and five. So it's the exact amount that I thought, all right, $50. Oh, but dang it, there it is right there. So it was still $50, we're on par with that. Um, so that's not neither red nor green. And if we take that away from the 344, so 344 minus 50 equals 294. Um, so in essence, I should have about $294 available. Now, that number isn't going to be quite right because remember, anything that we saved here, this, what, 60, 
$67 or so that we saved here is actually going towards next week. So if I take that uh, $294 minus the $67 that I'm going to put towards the savings challenges in my next paycheck, this is closer to the amount of money that I should have available in my bills buffer account. So again, after we finish all of the numbers, it shows $200 and... And I'll come out just a little bit. It shows $294 that I should have um, available in my bills account for me to utilize. But the $67 that I saved from not using all of my variable expense money, that is going towards my savings challenges for the check that I'm going to, that I received on today, January the 12th. So I remove that from this number. And this is closer to what I have available in my bills buffer. It will remain in my bills buffer because I just feel like I need to have that, that fluff in there or that cushion in there since my budget is so tight. If you looked at my budget with me, then you know, basically, um, I had $10 remaining from this check, this January the 12th check available just in taking care of my bills and my regular variable expenses. Uh, I only had $10 left. So this buffer or cushion of 227 is gonna probably come in very handy. All right, um, so I think that was my weekly budget check-in. I've done my budget closeout and we've already talked about my goals. I think that is it for me. All right, thanks everybody for your time. You guys have a good one.